Welcome to Glendale First United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Chris Tate, and I'm so happy that you've joined us for worship today. It's my hope that by being here, by watching this video, that you'll help to better understand not just who God is for you, but who God is seeking to be in your life and what it looks like for all of us who consider ourselves or want to be followers of Jesus Christ, how we can do that, how we can do that in such a way so that it makes a difference for us and it makes a difference for the world around us. As we gather, we do have many things that are going on here in the life of the church. If you're watching this video today on Sunday, January 15th, you would want to know that on tomorrow, the 16th, on Martin Luther King Day, there is going to be a celebration here in the Glendale area. Uh, we're going to be a part of that. Uh, the plans may be changing because of the rain that may be coming. Thank God for that, uh, the rain. But you can find out more about that, what the events are and what the schedule is by going to the description below. Also, we will be having our first church council meeting of the year, and that will be on January 29th, that Sunday. And also we'll be having our next monthly fellowship lunch, which will be after the 1030 worship service on Sunday, January 22nd. So there is a lot going on, and I hope that you can join us for any or all of those things as you are available. So with that said, and as we begin to worship, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for the love that you have for us. And thank you that, that you love us so greatly that you don't abandon us. You don't leave us orphaned, but that you are constantly reaching out to us to extend to us your love and to call us forward, to help us to know how to live into a life and a future that is not only good for us, but that is the best way that we can be. And so as we begin to worship this day, as we move through this new series, Speak to us and help us to know what that is so that we can be faithful in following you in all things. It is in the mighty name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Our first gospel reading is from John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Our second reading is from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 28. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So for those of you who've been with us uh, since the last year, uh, you may remember that we went through a process called the Readiness 360 survey. Uh, and for those of you who weren't with us or don't know about that, I'll explain a little bit about it here. So what it was is a survey that people in the church were able to take and it gave us uh, some feedback on where we are as a church on um, what it is that we're struggling with and how it is that we can best move forward in the future. And so one of the things that the consultant who was helping us with this uh, uh, helped us to discern is that we need a coach to work with us to help us get some clarity on not just where we are, but where it is that we're wanting to go, where it is that God's calling us to go in the future. And so we have done that. The single administrative board has uh, engaged a coach, Reverend Kim Shockley is her name. Uh, she's very accomplished. Uh, if you wanna know more about her, ask me, I'll be happy to tell you. And she's gonna begin working with us to help us to discern that, to help us to figure out what that is. But rather than just saying, well, what is it we wanna do? And then we all just put down on a list of paper, you know, all those things that are most important to us or those things that we care most deeply about, uh, remembering that we're a church that we're not a church of ourselves, but we're a church of Jesus Christ, that, that we worship the triune God and that we gather in God's name. And so to help figure that out, what it is that, that we are being called to do now is to ask God, 
is to join together in prayer and to pray individually, to pray corporately. God, what is it that you're wanting to do here now? Specifically, God, how do you want to use Glendale first now? And that as we go through these next number of weeks, as we pray that prayer together, as we share and reflect and discern what it is that it's being revealed to us, then hopefully that God will respond and that we'll be able to if not know exactly what that looks like, at least have some better ideas so that we can move into the future, not that we necessarily want for ourselves, but the future that God wants for ourselves, believing that God knows even better than we do and that living into the future that God wants is truly the best thing for us. And so to do that, um, we're gonna begin doing a couple of different things. So to help us do that, we're starting a sermon series today where we're going to be looking at some key scriptures uh, to help inform us in how it is that we will discern or understand what it is that God might be telling us. So bear with me for a second. So there are many times when people will say that there's no way for us to know who God is. There's no way for us to understand God, that God is infinite and beyond all ability for humans to understand. Now, in some ways that's true. I mean, God is infinite. We are finite. Uh, God is beyond our ability to fully understand. But God has revealed to us most pointedly and most specifically through the scriptures. And so we have in the Holy Bible very detailed descriptions of who God is, of who God wants to be and seeks to be with us, and what our relationship has been with God and was with God for thousands of years. And so in that we have a very detailed description of what God's nature is like. And so with that, when we pray, uh, one of the tricky things with prayer is that, at least in my experience, I know other people have a different experience than this, and, and I'm a little jealous of them. I always have a hard time when I'm praying to be able to understand what is it that, that God is really telling me? Is it me just imagining this myself? Am I just dreaming this up? Is this just some sort of projection of my subconscious to fill some sort of need, want, or desire that I have? All those sorts of things, or is this actually the Word of God? And so my understanding in how we help to do this is that we look to what the scripture says. We look at the Bible. We look specifically at the life, teaching, and ministry of Jesus Christ because that is the best revelation of God that we have. And so we take these things that we believe or think might be from God and we match it up against that. And so if, if God is telling us one thing in the scripture and that we believe God is telling us something else in prayer and response to prayer, that those things should align because God cannot fundamentally go against God's own nature. So like, for example, in the scripture and in the verses that we have today that Pastor Stephanie just read for us, we hear that God is loving that fundamentally that God is loving, that is who God is, that is who we see in Jesus Christ, that is the main thing, the most important thing that God calls us to in Christ is to love God with all that we are, to love others as we love ourselves. We call this the great commandment. Uh, in John, it's the new commandment that we will be known by being loving people, that people will be able to understand that we are followers of Jesus Christ by whether or not we are loving. So this self-giving, self-sacrificing, this agape love is so central to who Jesus is that any response that God gives us to who it is that, that we're being called to become, that, that how it is that God wants to use this church, it fundamentally will be loving in what it is. And that if we get something, that if we receive something, if we believe that, that we're getting a response to the prayers that we're praying and it's fundamentally not loving, then we really need to look at that and say, is that God telling us that or is that something else? Is it our subconscious? Is it a projection? Is it something else we might want to attribute it to? What really is it? And that's why, you know, you see these movies and these different sorts of things, and these have been horrific stories, but where someone will say, well, God told me to burn down my neighbor's house. That can't be God. 
because that's not a loving thing to do. God is fundamentally loving. God doesn't go against God's own nature. And so therefore that can't be God that told them to do that sort of thing. And so as we go through these weeks, as we go through these six weeks, as we use these scriptures, and just so you know, these scriptures were not just chosen as random. Uh, These are the scriptures. If you've ever been in our sanctuary, this room that I'm in right now at Glendale First, these are the scriptures that are literally etched in stone uh, around this sanctuary. These were scriptures that during the time when this was built in the mid-1960s were important, uh, were central to people in the life of the church, so much so that they wanted to have them around them. They wanted to have them where they would be seen and speaking to them in this worship space. And so with those being central to who this church was then, we're looking at then to help inform us about how it is that God might be using us in the future. So that's a lot said about where we are, about what we're doing, about how we're doing it. If you have questions or concerns about that, please feel free to contact me or Pastor Stephanie. Also, we have our weekly devotional guide that will be going much more into that, so I encourage you to check that out as well. So the point that we're starting with today, the, the aspect of God's nature, of Jesus's nature, that we're beginning to focus on today is the main thing. It's the most important thing. It's the idea of being loving. I mean, it says later on in the scripture that God is love, but we hear in this, these examples of Jesus's life and teaching in Luke and in John, this being conveyed to us. These are called the great commandment in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which are often also called the synoptic gospels because they're so similar and they share so much of their material together. And in John, it's slightly different as you likely just heard, uh, where it's called the new commandment. But in these, we have this idea put forward by Jesus, this central value to who he is, that being loving is the defining characteristic of who Jesus is. It's the defining characteristic of who God is. It is the most central thing to who they are, to what they are, and to what it is that they call us to do. Now, again, uh, if you've been watching these sermons for a number of weeks, you've heard me talk about this many times. But the love that we're talking about here, being loving, um, is a specific type of love. Uh, The New Testament, when it was first written, was written in Greek and in Aramaic. There were parts that were also in Hebrew. But nevertheless, as it was written down in those languages, there wasn't just a single word that was used for love. There was a number of different words. And these different words that were used for loves weren't just different adjectives describing the same thing. They meant different things. And so there is a familial love, a love that you have for your family, for your parents, or for your children. There is a love that is born or that grows out of shared experience, or in particular, shared suffering that people will uh, begin to develop for one another a closeness because of going through a really hard situation together. Also, there is the love that I think most of us think of most often when we hear the word love, which is a romantic love that we have for a romantic partner or someone that, uh, that we're enamored with in that sort of way. Those are not the type of loves that Jesus is talking about here. That's not the type of love that is central to who God is. The word in the New Testament that's used to describe it is agape. And what agape love is, is a perfect love. It's a self-giving, it's a self-sacrificing love. It's a love where the person doing it, who is doing the loving, is willing to do what is done for the sake of the other person, even at their own expense, and who does it not because of what it's going to bring back for them. Like, for example, I can do something that's really kind for someone, but if I'm doing it for them so that they'll be kind to me next time or because uh, it might cause them to, you know, come and support my business or if it causes them to, you know, like me more or develop feelings for me and those sorts of things, that's not what this is. It's doing something that is kind and loving for someone when it costs us something and doing it with no expectation of return. And if you think we see this clearly illustrated for us in the life of Jesus, 
We see this scene for him, that, that he does all of these things, that he heals people, that he blesses people, that he cures people, that he teaches them and brings them out of the suffering and the separation and the oppression and all these things that they are experiencing, all these kinds of suffering. And he does it not so that they'll be like, hey, Jesus, you're the best, you're the greatest. He doesn't do that at all. And ultimately we see it that he does this by going and being willing to die on the cross and being raised for our sake, knowing that it cost him even his life itself, but yet he was willing to do it for us. That's really the most antipified version of it. And I don't believe that except for maybe, I don't know, I can't even imagine the situation where this is, you know, the case, but you know, Jesus isn't literally calling us to die on a cross for the sake of others. But this idea of being willing to be people who are concerned about others, who live and give of themselves for the sake of helping others, even when it doesn't benefit us back, is central to who God is. And so as we hear in these scriptures, as we hear in these stories, as we seek to understand who it is that, that God is, and most importantly now, what it is that God is calling us to do, who it is that God is calling us to be, how it is that God is seeking to use this church, which is of course us to gather together in this place, that that is foundationally going to be a part of it, that that is going to be central to it because that is central to God as well. And if it's not, then it's not God that we're hearing. And we need to acknowledge that. We need to recognize that. It may be something that's good and important, but it's not the answer to the prayer that we're asking at this time. So again, I encourage you to get the devotional guide for this week. You can find a link to it in the description below to be going through that. But most importantly, as we begin on this journey to be praying with all of us here together, God, how do you wanna use Glendale first now? To be praying about that and if you receive something in response, to, to not just keep that to yourself, but to share it to email Pastor Stephanie or me so that we can be gathering that information and seeking to better understand how it is that God is calling and leading us here and now. So with that, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for who you are and for the love that you have for us. And also thank you for helping us to know how central, how defining a characteristic love is to you and how you seek for it to be in each and every one of us. And as we gather together as your people in this place and in this body of Christ, as we seek to understand how it is that you want to use this church now, we ask that you would speak, that you would reveal that to us clearly, that you would help it to not be something that we have to worry or question or wonder, is this really what it is? but that you would speak to us in a way that is clear and distinct enough that we would be able to, without question, know that whatever it is, that it comes from you. And that you would help us to be able to hold in our hearts and our minds how important being loving is to you so that we can use that as a tool to help discern, to help understand what it is that's from you and what it is that comes from who knows where else. So gracious God, we pray to you we seek your guidance and your wisdom, and we ask that you would help us to be fully open in mind and in spirit so that we can be able to receive. And as we pray these things, we also pray together saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Each time we gather for worship, we are reminded of how blessed we are by God. And so it is out of gratitude and with thanksgiving that we give back to God a portion of what we have received. You can do that today by going to glendalefirst.org to give. With that, let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the ministry of reconciliation to which you call us in the name of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Accept these gifts for your mission to heal all creation. May they be a testament to your love for us as we share them in love for you. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. 
So before we have our benediction, don't forget the upcoming events we have, both with the Martin Luther King Day celebration, our upcoming church council meeting, and our fellowship lunch that's coming up on the 22nd. And as we go forth from this time, and as you go back to your life and whatever waits for you there, may we all remember how much God loves us and how much that God wants that love to be central in who we are. And so that as we seek to hear from God, as we wait to hear how God wants us to live into the future and even into the present here and now, to remember that being loving will be central to that and to all that we do in Christ's name. In the name of God, the Creator, Sustainer, and Redeemer. Amen.